Hi there, it's Whitney and it's Tuesday, March 24th, and we are going live to talk about your manifesting and your abundance mindset and how your spirit guides help you in situations and how they rework situations. So if you're here, I would love to know and just let me know you're here. You can comment and say hi. If you're watching the replay, I'd love for you to comment hashtag replay. And then of course, if you'd like something I say, press the like button. If you love something I say, press the love button. And I love it when you interact and I get to see your comments. So we're gonna jump right in here. And we're working from the home office here, so I'm adjusting the lighting a little bit. So it looks like I have a glow, but um, maybe, hey, maybe that looks like it's from spirit <laughs> when really it's the sunlight. Or maybe it is from spirit. Who knows? So before we get started today, what I'd love for you to do is just take a few moments and connect in and close your eyes. Take a deep breath and release your breath out through your mouth. Feel your shoulders just relax and feel yourself kind of sink down. And I always, before any kind of talk that I have with you, invite my spirit guides. And so I always invite you to invite your spirit guides too. And they can listen in. And the reason that we do this is because it's really important that they know what's going on, that they know the conversations that you're having, and that you actually are actively communicating with them. Because one of the biggest things that we fail to do and is actually have a conversation with our guides. And that's actually the most important thing that we need to do is have a conversation with our guides. We cannot assume that they just know what we need. So if you've watched my videos for a while, you know all that, but I wanted to say it again. I think it's really, really important. So, hey June, good to see you. And I know we have some others who are here. Sometimes Facebook is a little bit slow letting me know the comments and who's here. So if I don't see your comment, I think it might be something with Facebook, but I'd love for you to comment, interact with one another, ask questions. We'll be for, here for just a little bit. So, hey, Nikki, good to see you as well. Okay, let's talk about your circumstance and let's talk about your manifesting. So when circumstances change in our life, Normally what happens is we come into a place of going, oh no, oh my gosh, now I'm in fear mode and what do I do? I think that it's normal because we're kind of trained in that way or trained in our bodies or our brains and we have these triggers. However, knowing that our circumstances may have changed does not change our manifesting ability or our ability to stay in abundance mindset. And I'm going to kind of step through this here. First off, when we are manifesting, and I know that we're not going to go into all the details, but what's really important is that you hold the vision for what you're manifesting and the vibration and the energy of it. Now, if you're trying to manifest something that is lower vibrational, that's for your, your lower mind, your ego, that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your life purpose aligning to something that you know is from your heart. And so let's say it's your perfect house. So I'm just I'm so excited and I can feel myself in this house and I feel free and it feels beautiful and it feels grounded and it's a place where I get to connect with family or whatever it is, whatever you're manifesting the excitement, the energy. It is still your job to hold that vision. It is still your job to hold that place. It's still your vision to hold that. It's your job and your vision and your energy. And all those things combined is very important that no matter what's going on on the physical plane, we are creating this through our thoughts. We're creating this through our emotions. And so this is our physical body. And then we have our mental, our emotional body and our physical bodies outside. And I say outside, outside of the physical body. And so everything that happens in our life is created through thought. It starts with a thought. And then the more that we amplify that thought with emotion and positive emotion, especially, then the more that we start to emanate that through all the different levels of our being. And so since we are magnets and we have energy around us, the more that we are thinking these thoughts and that we're feeling the emotion of this, then we start attracting that to us. When we're communicating with our spirit guides, they also are saying, great, we're reworking this for you. 
So if your circumstance has changed, sometimes we go to the bottom of the barrel of our emotions and we're like, oh, woe is me. What am I going to do? I've got all this fear. And your spirit guides are like, hey, we're reworking this for you. So sometimes we expect when we are making this change that we're going to walk in into something that is just this open door and it's just super easy. But our spirit guides get to determine the how it happens. So we need to determine what it is that we're manifesting and making sure it's in alignment with our vibration, alignment with our spirit and soul, and alignment with our path. And we're holding the energy and our spirit guides determine how it happens. So that's when we get disappointed. So when it looks like our circumstances have gone out of control or it looks like things have happened, Really, that's our spirit guides determining how it happens. Maybe you have to learn a lesson. Maybe it's a test there for you to continue to hold that vibration because we put tests for ourselves to really stay in that vibrational frequency. Inside of our household, I know a lot of us are working from home with children and so forth. So there can be a lesson inside of there as well. So your spirit guides may be presenting this offer to you as, hey, would you like to work from home? Or it could be presenting something to you of saying, hey, do you really like your job? Do you really love your job? Or are you ready to realign for something else? And so it's just a nice way to understand what's going on in our life internally, what's going on in our spirit as well. Would, would we like to work from home? Would we like to be more connected to family? Is there something that we're missing that we need to be addressing inside of our family? So now is the time to honor that and look at it a little bit more. Also, our spirit guides have the master plan and so does your higher self but your spirit guides start working on opportunities to make that happen so somebody who had already taken aligned steps to move forward on their business that they want to open and maybe they're doing it part-time they're not too far off of their path so this time may be an extra boost to put more energy into their business that they're wanting and that they've already created Somebody who hasn't taken any steps might feel a little bit overwhelmed right now because they have to realign and your spirit guides are like, hey, we know what you've been wanting to manifest, but you need to take these steps. And so we're going to put you in the situation so you can learn some lessons and we got to get the timing right. And so we're going to be presenting opportunities to you. Hold on. We are working on it. Know that your spirit guides are always working on whatever's for your highest and, and the best. So if you need to learn lessons about connecting more, if you've been ignoring your, your health, your self-care, your meditation practice, your balance, let's say you work all the time and you haven't had any time for your family and now you're like, whoa, I got lots of family time. Whatever it is, there's less in there. But please know in all of whatever's going on, it's still your job to hold that vibration and that energy of that manifestation. And so many times we put the physical things, the tangible things in front of us as more important because we see it. And so we feel like we have to be more responsive to it. But taking the time, or what I like to say in my programs, is create space for other priorities. Create space to talk to your guides. Create space to connect within and to realign and hold that vision and that excitement and talk to your guides about it. And so when we're manifesting, your job is not to figure out the how it's going to work out. And that's what happens. Let's say that you felt like you're making amazing progress. You're like, yes, I feel like it's almost here. And then all of a sudden, your life completely gets turned upside down. It doesn't mean that there's anything that's gone wrong with your manifesting. Spirit is working out the how. Your guides are working out the how. You don't need to worry about it. You just need to continue to feel that excitement. You know that it's here. So when we're manifesting, we're saying, I am or I have... So even if you're not tangibly seeing it, whatever it is, I experience this. So you're, you are putting yourself in the present moment. So you're saying, I have so much freedom. I am so happy. Whatever it is that you want to manifest, 
that is part of your responsibility. That is your job is holding the frequency. Your spirit guides determine the how. As far as your spirit guides reworking the situation, know that sometimes we have this thing in our mind that when the doors open, that it's going to be this miraculous thing filled with rainbows and roses. Now it is sometimes, and it's a beautiful process, but I've shared this story many times, so I won't go into too much detail right now. But when we were manifesting the house of my dreams, this is what it looked like. Roller coaster ride, up and down, up and down, up and down. We did not just da -da, magically walk through the doors and had no challenge at all. We manifested, we kept the vibration high, we kept saying, this is our home, this is so beautiful. I know that if this is not the place, it still has the energy of it. So we were living in that energy. But the actual road of how we got there was like this, up and down, up and down, up and down. But we still got there. So remember to keep your vibration high. As far as abundant mindset goes, know that you have to do things, you have to take action wherever you are right now to work on mindset. It's not something that is going to necessarily, you're going to just flip a switch and say, I have an abundant mindset. Now you can, and actually I use that technique anytime you think of a negative thing or you complain or you say, oh, I don't have enough of this. You take a moment, catch yourself and immediately flip it to a positive. I have an abundance of this. I have an abundance of this. I know I'm provided for. So when I walk into the store, I know that I'll find all the things that I need. Maybe not the things that I'm expecting are on my list. You're just saying, I have all the things that I need. When you're in that abundance mindset, you know that things come to you as needed. So knowing that it's a constant energetic flow, a lot of times in scarcity or fear mode, we tend to clam up and we want to hold things and we don't want to spend money or we feel like we have to reserve things because we're not going to have enough. Now I get where that comes from and I do think it's important that you need to be smart and your money and I also think you need to be smart using some of that ego because I don't believe we can ever fully get rid of ego nor should we because it helps us with our logic and it actually helps us with things. But Knowing that if we're holding on tight to something, sometimes it hurts us. If we're holding on so tight to something, then what we're doing is we're telling the universe or telling our spirit guides that we don't trust that there's more to come. It's similar to if you were to hold your breath. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to have any more air, so I'm just going to hold my breath. What happens if you hold your breath and you never take another breath? Mm, not good stuff, right? So think of that as money. Think of that as energy. Energy is always available to us. Energy flows in and flows out. Money is energy. Money flows in and flows out. Doesn't mean that we have to like hold on to the things. Knowing the problem that where we get stuck a lot of the times is knowing that it flows in. We just don't believe it will flow in for so many reasons. So what I would like you to do, if you're having trouble with that part, because a lot of times people may spend it and then they're like, I don't know when the next thing's coming in. Remember, money flows in as well. So you, what I would say is your job is to work on receiving. Your job is to work on receiving energy. So a couple tips. When you're breathing, I'd love for you to breathe in. And when you're breathing in, if you're working or in that money mindset, I'd love for you to breathe in the energy, like get the air, and imagine that you're breathing in money. And then when you're breathing out, I'd like for you to breathe out money. And then notice that you're going to breathe in money and breathe out money. And so just know that it's a constant flow. Now, sometimes we hold on to money a little bit more, and sometimes we feel like we're spending a little bit more. And so when you're breathing, I'd love for you to imagine that you're balancing those frequencies out, which is really beautiful. The next thing I'd love for you to do is work on your root chakra. I think that that is really important as well. I have a free video actually on messengerspirit.com forward slash blog, and it's about your chakras and energy of money. And you could take the word money and replace it with abundance in whatever form that you would like to as well. So it doesn't have to be money. 
But sometimes when we think of abundance, we think more of the money aspect of it. And what's interesting is even though we talk about money, it usually goes deeper. It usually is more than just money. There's other fears or feeling like we're not safe or we're not grounded. So I'd love for you to work on the root chakra. And what's happening right now are many light workers, many sensitives, many intuitives and empaths don't really like what's going on on the earth plane. And so they don't feel safe grounding. And so we have to work on that. It's important. It's so much more fun to play in spirit all day long, right? Where it feels good and it's lighter and it has a lighter and higher frequency. But that's not why we're here. We're here in a body. And so if we're here in a body, we actually have to utilize those lessons and those energies that we're receiving and the understandings and ground it into the physical plane. And so we need to connect with earth. We need to connect with our body. We need to connect with the tangible earth plane things. That doesn't mean that we're developing an over connection to them, but we have to be okay with money. We have to be okay with our, our life. We have to be okay with family. So what I'd love for you to do is over the next few days, look at what you feel like you're resisting. Are you irritated with family? Are you irritated with your job? Are you irritated with money? Whatever it is. And just become aware of it. And so see where that lies. Most of the time this is in the root chakra. So I'd love for you to take some time and instead of resisting whatever it is, see how you can lean into it a bit more and say, okay, you know what? Let's just be honest with myself here. I'm having a block doing this. Let me see how I can embrace it instead of resisting it and just see how it feels. There are other plenty of things that you can do for the root chakra. One of my favorites is to massage my feet and I can utilize the essential oil patchouli and there's Jasper and whatever crystal works for you. I prefer Jasper for a root chakra opener, but you might consider a different crystal. Everyone's energy responds to different crystals. So see what works best for you and just love yourself. Get grounded. One of the things that I do to help ground is cook. And if I can't cook, I will do housework or something where I'm not utilizing energy up here as much as I am utilizing the energy of my body, even doing laundry. I know that that doesn't sound exciting, right? And even doing laundry can be grounding. So let's just say putting the tasks first that maybe you don't want to do. So maybe it's budgeting, maybe it's um, cleaning your room, <laughs> whatever it is. But let's go ahead and kind of resolve some of those things. And that can actually be helpful too. So let's see. I'm going to jump in the comments really quickly. And if anybody has any questions, there's a little bit of a lag time between when you ask and when I receive. Um, but I will see who's jumped in. So hey, Kelly and Sherry and Teresa and Terry and another Terry and Lori. Hey, Danielle and Scarlett and Bonnie. Um, Miggy says, oh my gosh, Whitney, that's me right now. I've had so much time to create content and make connections for my business. Beautiful. I think that's wonderful. I truly believe that we have gotten out of alignment. And so we focused on so many things. How many of you have been on your phones maybe more than normal? Or how many of you have realized that maybe you have been on your phones more than normal? What's happened is in our community, in our consciousness, we work and then we come home and then we watch TV or then we stay on our phones all the time. And it becomes this weird habit. And what we're doing is we're distracting ourselves from really going within and realigning and connecting to our intuition and to our guides and to ourself and our bodies. And so we're distracting. And then we end up saying, I don't have any time. I don't have any time to do these things. Well, guess what? You got lots of time right now. And so this is a time to realign and ask yourself. And so one of the things that you brought up, Miggy, you were talking about um, your help, you're creating your business, which is beautiful. Some out there, though, may still be in jobs that they don't love. And so if you think of your job, if you had to wake up tomorrow and go into work, do you love it or do you not love it? And if you don't love it, it's time to really think about realigning to what your purpose is and what you would really love to do. If you say to me, Whitney, I don't know, but I just want to take a break. Well, that's telling me that you need to really make more time or I don't believe you can actually make more time. You create time, like you create space for the time to actually 
take off to reconnect. So find what it is that you love. Find what it is that you need to do. We have lots of time right now and I think it's really beautiful and it's time for us to realign and re-coordinate. And this is a great time to communicate with your guides even more. And this is where I'd love for you to work on your manifestation. So think of what it is that you truly desire. Embody the emotion of it. And I know that some of you are inside my program and have the manifesting course. For those of you who are not, what I'd love for you to do is to just visualize the energy, the emotions of what you would like. Even if you don't know, like you're like, I don't know what I want to manifest. Well, what would you, how would you like to feel? Think about that. How would you like to feel every day? Energized, free, uh, full of love, happiness. Just manifest that. Feel it. For I would say, let's do three to five minutes a day. And say to yourself, I am free, I am happy, I am loved, I am energized. Say that to yourself. And if you have issues saying that when you don't feel it, say I give myself permission to receive love, whatever that is. Um, hey, Cindy, good to see you. And um, Bonnie says, quiet your mind and meditate. Yeah, that's beautiful too. So for those of my students, I know that I've told you this before. And myself, like, first of all, I love it for people to meditate. For myself, I don't meditate as much, but I have started to more. And I think it's a little might be a little weird, but I, I listen to my own meditations because whenever I create a meditation, it's not from me, it's from my spirit guide. So I know that whatever came through, I needed to hear. And so I like to listen to that. But so I will be listening to meditations before I go to sleep. So know that maybe you just need silence. Maybe you need a guided meditation. Maybe you just need quiet music, whatever that is. But for me in my practice, what I like to do is, and I've started doing this in the last couple months, is I will listen to the meditation as I go to sleep. And I think that that's been really helpful too. So Miggy says, last week I was wondering how and who to share some of what I've created with. And the next day I was asked by my job to coordinate a wellness initiative. So now I have an audience to test ideas with. This is a perfect example of your spirit guides coming through. And Miggy, this is a perfect example of how you have stepped up and have taken aligned action and manifesting I've talked about your energy and the emotions and what you need to be doing like what your job is your job is not to figure out the how it's gonna work so Miggy was like you know I'm gonna create this amazing content this is what I'm gonna do for some ideas that I have but I don't know how it's gonna work out and her spirit guide said hey here's an opportunity so Miggy had a choice her choice was do I actually share these ideas with these people or do I not? And all the times when our guides give us opportunities, we get to ask ourselves, should I do this or should I not do this? And I will say nine times out of 10, please say, I will do this. That is taking aligned action. If you say no, that means you're really not ready for it. And your spirit guides did all this work to find the how and they have created the path and then you say, no, I'm good. <laughs> we don't want that, right? You're not here for that. You're here to make change in your life, right? Hey, Cindy and Scarlett, she said, I literally just had this conversation 10 minutes ago. I love it, I'm so happy. June says, I've been cleaning out my pantry, which has been driving me crazy. This is perfect. This is actually a great grounding. I know that sounds so weird, but like doing laundry, cleaning things is really helpful. So. I'm actually embarrassed to show any of you a picture of my bedroom because I, that is something I have not cleaned in a while. So yesterday I started to go through all the things that I was putting off. And so when I'm doing this, I actually can feel myself getting more grounded. I get really focused and I can feel that energy and that's actually a beautiful thing. Um, Scarlett says she was having the conversation about how we distract ourselves from our truth. I feel that we distract ourselves with phones and TVs and stuff because we don't want to deal with the truth. Remember how I was saying that empaths and intuitives don't really like the earth energy sometimes? They don't they don't want to connect in. And so we have to realize that it's our it's our mission, it's our purpose. We have to connect in. But sometimes we can find ourselves off a path or we don't want to actually go through the change because that means we actually have to do the work so we distract ourselves. I know that if that's something that you've done, there's no judgment. I have done it in the past too. 
just know that this time right now is, I really believe universally the time where we can realign ourselves and revision. So no matter if you are working in a full-time job that you don't like or part-time job or whatever it is, I truly believe that you can take this time realign to your purpose and then take aligned action toward the purpose. And even when our ego says that we can't because we don't have enough training or because we feel like, oh, that's impossible or whatever it is, remember it's not your job to figure out the how. Just tune into your intuition, talk to your spirit guides, let the messages come in and then take aligned action from there. They will figure out the how. The key is that you have to take aligned action. Christina says, way more. My battery keeps dying. Trying to break the habit, it does keep me from aligning. I keep trying to fight it. Lots of anxiety. So Christina, I hope that you did that meditation. And I would also put out the aura bubble. So messengerspirit.com forward slash peace to help you get connected to your own spirit. And really doing some visualizations, connecting down into earth, saying affirmations, I am safe, I am connected, those types of things. And what happens to Christina, and thank you for sharing and being vulnerable and, and open here, is sometimes we need to release. And our root chakra, I have a water bottle. If you've ever seen me in person, I've used this exercise before. So if we are filled with emotions, and this is our root chakra, and our root chakra is blocked, then we're going to stay in these emotions. And so this is another reason why we need to open our root chakra, because if I take the cap off, all the emotions going to pour out, right? So it's really important that we work on our root chakra for grounding, also to ground our mission coming in, and that can also help with the earth star chakra too, which is part of grounding our purpose. But our root chakra is a great release point, and so we have to release. And we don't release sometimes because we think we're going to lose it or we think we're going to cry. And those things are all okay and beautiful to do. And in fact, we need it because if we're holding all this emotion out here and we've got all these feelings out here, what do you think we're going to attract more of? those emotions and feelings. And so we need to release them so we can come to our normal vibratory state, which is really important. Bonnie says, that's how I connect with my guides, meditation before sleep. I think that's really beautiful. And Kim says, are spirit guides people you know, family, or can they be total strangers? This is a great question. And Kim, you can also find a video about this too at messengerspirit.com forward slash blog. But 99% of the time, they are not your family members. They're not anyone you've known, and they're not um, anybody that you've known before on an earth plane. The reason being is your spirit guides need to be objective. And they also need to make sure that they're in the same vibration as you are. Our loved ones, even though we love them, aren't necessarily the same vibration. And also they like to specialize in similar type of things that we are into as well. And then when our loved ones and spirit cross into spirit, sometimes there's they haven't gone through the training to be a spirit guide. There's not necessarily an opening for us. That doesn't mean our loved ones can't come through and help us. They can come through to help us but they're not necessarily our guides, nor should they be. They can give great opinions, and let me tell you, they can be super opinionated in spirit. But our spirit guides are more objective. But great question, and there's more training coming out in April about that, but you can also find some free videos too. Bonnie says spirit guides can be anyone, animals. So again, I spirit guides are guides that are trained specifically to be guides they are like the counselors they guide teach and protect us but we can still converse with our loved ones and we can still talk to our animals and spirit and they can be really beautiful to have those conversations our loved ones can come through and give us information about practical day-to-day -day things they can give higher vibrational messages um, but our spirit guides are, I would say, the dedicated people that have kind of been assigned or attracted to our life path and purpose. So more on that on spirit guides. Um, but when you go to messengerspirit.com forward slash blog, go to this video called Spirit Guides. That is the video that I'm talking about. And so for Bonnie and Kim, I think that can be really helpful for you as well. Okay, I'm going to sign off here unless there's any other questions here. Christina says, thank you. You're welcome. Miggy says, I say, let it go. Crying is a great way to release. Those are wise words. And hey, Donna, good to see you. All right. Please know as we recap. One, what's your job in manifesting? Taking aligned action, receiving the intuitive guidance from your spirit helpers. What is not your job in manifesting? Trying to figure out the how. You need to figure out the what. Do not figure out the how. Your spirit guides figure out the how. 
when they're figuring out the how for you, it can feel like your life has totally like reorganized itself or you feel like it's been turned upside down. Know that your spirit guides are reworking the situations and sometimes we need to learn lessons so that we can become in a higher vibrational state also. So just know that we have lessons that we need to learn on our path and also know that as they are reworking the situation, sometimes it looks like we are going backwards and we're not. They just have to shift and organize some things around. Sometimes when we're manifesting and we feel like we're doing everything that, that we are needing to do and it's not manifesting itself, then there can be some timing things that they're working on as well. So just know that, okay? Also, with what can you do to stay in an abundance mindset, flip the negative script. So if you say, I don't have enough, say, I have enough. If you feel like you're lying to yourself if because you, you don't feel like you have enough and you're like, I can't say I have enough, say, I give myself permission to feel as if I have enough or whatever it is, ease yourself into it. With your root chakra, work on your root chakra, address the things that you've been resisting and see how you can lean into it as well. So I hope that you take these things and work with them. Know that this time is there for you to realign. And I will see all of you very soon and know that you'll be getting an email soon this week with a video coming out. And I wish you all the best. All right, have a great Tuesday.